Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I've um, particularly enjoyed this weekend watching the and listening to the um, the video, the YouTube video of Kathleen Zellner back on the 25th of September, obviously the day that uh, it was announced that Making a Murderer 2 was being released. Um, she was accepting a reward um, and uh, at about the 47 minute mark is when um, when she really ta starts to talk about the uh, making a murderer, um, what to look forward to, and I'll get on to that in a minute. Um, interestingly, at the 20 minute mark, around about that, she particularly refers to prosecutors and their prosecutorial immunity, and she refers to them as being decent people. No doubt in my mind, she would not include Ken Kratz as one of those. She pointed out that of 2,000 wrongful convictions, in 84% of them, the prosecutor did things that were basically illegal. Well, should be illegal, and let, but they have this prosecutorial immunity. Coercing witnesses, and that certainly applies to making a murderer. Co coercing confessions, <laughs> also tick. And of course, concealing evidence. There was no doubt in my mind that she was making reference, although she didn't say him, she was pointing out about Ken Kratz, along with the, the others. Um, yes. She does do a very good job of explaining the problem with AEDPA. And, you know, to, to cut a long story short, the Seventh Circuit have basically been getting it wrong for 50 years, 50 years since they last um, heard uh, throughout a, a confession. So for 50 years they've been getting it wrong. So their attitude is... Well, we've been getting it wrong for 50 years. We'll just keep doing what we're doing because we're quite happy doing what we're doing. Um, at the 30, 31 minute mark, she particularly refers to wrongful, false confessions. And basically, how, how on earth can the police, the prosecutor, and even the judge not look and listen to a confession and realise that it's wrong. Okay, um, Kathleen Zellner quotes the case of the guy who, of, of Ryan Ferguson, and the, the false confession given by, I think, somebody called Ericsson. And they feed him the fact about the murder weapon, the fact that it was a belt. Isn't that amazing? Because that's exactly what Wigan and Fassbender did to, um, well, Wigan. It was obviously that blurted out who shot her in the head to Brendan. But I think the point there is, you know, that Kathleen Zellner is saying, what on earth are these judges playing at that they cannot see that? For me, that was definitely a, uh, a criticism. If you read between the lines, listen between the lines of what she's saying, that was definitely a criticism of... Judge Fox, because that was absolutely ludicrous. And the fact that they never played the last half hour of the tape. Very, very strange. <coughs> now at the 38 minute mark, I thought this was very, very interesting. She refers to what's basically known as the Amazon Echo case, the Alexa case. Again, to cut a long story short, if you go to the 38 minute and listen to it in full, but what, she, what is she really saying is that even with no evidence, the prosecutor in that case could have won. And it was pointed out to her that no matter what evidence Zelna had, had produced, to be accused in that county is to lose in that state. Isn't that exactly the same as Manitowoc and Calumet? To be accused is to lose. It doesn't matter. They will, as soon as the police and the prosecutor decide that they're going to charge you and put you on trial, 
you have lost. Forget it. No, don't, don't worry about trying to present evidence to them. They are, they are too, um, too interested in perpetuating because in many cases it's the police that have uh, helped them to win the election and therefore it's, it's just looking after one another. Um, I thought it quite interesting that uh, you know, she mentions about the fact that in that case there was actually a DA that had a conscience. If only, if only, if only that were true of Manitrock and Calumet. Um, now, as I say, at the 47 minute mark, we do hear about making a murderer. And again, a little dig at the judges. I, su I suggest a little dig at Judge Sukovic, because she deliberately mentions the fact that judges maybe had a uh, did a little bit of biology at school, but when it comes to understanding the complexities of uh, of evidence, when it's science, they just haven't got a clue. And isn't that so so true of S Judge Sukovic not realizing what Kathleen Zellner was was um, presenting to her? I was very pleased that she mentioned the EDT. A test because that was a complete and utter scam and a farce and I've been saying that all along. At the 54 minute mark she refers to the need for the defence to present experts. Now at about the 55 minute mark she refers to when she first took on the case that when she first heard when Stephen Avery first wrote to her she looked at the evidence against him and said, well, there's, there's nothing we can do for you. It's, um, it's, 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 it's beyond, beyond anybody to help, to help you because you're clearly guilty. But then, when she actually looked into the case, when she actually watched Making a Murderer, that's when she realised, well, hold on a sec. This is all bogus. Um... And when she mentioned about the photos, the lack of photos of the burns, even Eric Jose heard me cheering 7,000 miles away. She also mentions the coroner not being allowed onto the scene, the Avery salvage yard. Also, what was really good was that her expert in blood did an experiment in dripping blood from a hand, from a bleeding hand. As I've been saying all along, there were 12 more places where there should have been blood. So if anybody's going to come up with this stupid notion that the blood in the car, puts Avery in the car, forget it, you are deluded, get some common hence, I mean sense, into your head. Now she also mentions about the brain fingerprinting, that was the first thing that apparently she did with Steve, was to check to see that he genuinely was innocent and genuinely didn't know anything about what had happened to her. But then, huh, then she moves on to uh, the bones. <laughs> she got this, in, this expert, the world expert in um, cremains and uh, burning bodies, John DeHaan. And he said quite categorically, quite categorically, there was no body burnt in that burn pit. Uh, first of all, there was no teeth. There should be teeth. They do not melt. Um, but most interestingly, in order to produce bones that were that cremated, right, in a burn pit, the heat necessary, okay, I'm, and I'm saying this slowly so that certain people in Canada can understand what I'm saying, that the heat would have burnt down the garage and exploded the propane tank. Okay, you get that, do you? I hope so. Because the next thing 
the DNA on the hood latch, the thing that Ken Kratz keeps whining on about, completely and utterly ludicrous. There was 90 times too much DNA on that swab. So where did the swab come from? It came from a groin swab that Stephen Avery should never have, 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 have had to have a uh, gone to the, the nurse and her do a groin swab. That's where that hood latch DNA came from. And finally, the bullet. <laughs> I like the fact she mentions that in six searches of the garage, they missed the bullet, right? Think about it, how, how does that happen? Right? How do you miss a bullet six times? Not only that, how do you explain the fact that when they looked at it under a microscope, what did they find embedded in it? Wood and paint. So, she went off, did a test herself, firing bullets, 22 calibre bullets, lead bullets, into cow bone. Every single bullet had bone fragment in it. There is DNA on the bullet. Where did that come from? It came from Teresa's own chapstick. There was wax on the bullet. Over in Manitowoc, they thought that they had stuffed Avery. They thought they had put him in the ground. No way. He's getting out, along with Brendan, and I'm going to be absolutely cheering when that happens. But in particular, when some of the stupid guilters out there wake up and realise that they were duped by one of the most vile creatures ever to walk this earth. Bye for now.